And now we move on to the next segment of our bulletin. On the table, over to you, Brandon. Thank you very much, Saeed Samjudin, Salah Belisa Badani, and welcome to On The Table. Now, tonight we have with us a very special person, the CEO and Medical Director of Hospital Umra, Dr. Mohamed Rafi bin Mohamed Faisal, who will be giving us some insights on medical tourism in Malaysia. Welcome to the show, Dato. Thank you, Brendan. If I may, Doctor? Yes, please. All right, Doctor, first and foremost, now we, uh, th this is something that it can get us a little bit more excited as compared to um, us here living in the country. We may have family and friends who are living abroad, mm -hmm. something that they can look forward to, which is medical tourism. So very briefly, what is medical tourism? Well, medical tourism is quite a broad uh, word in the mm -hmm. sense many people come into this country strictly for the sake of seeking health care. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has been a big income earner for the country. And in the last uh, probably a decade or so, mm -hmm. that has been flourishing. We have been doing very well in medical tourism. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think generally what happens is uh, people from abroad, you know, generally from, from the first world nations, mm -hmm without health insurance, they find it very difficult to seek treatment. That's right. In the sense, you, you need to pay it out of your pocket. So they look for alternatives. And, you know, traditionally, they've been going to the Middle East, they go to India. But of late, I think there's a big push towards them coming towards Malaysia. Right. And uh, we've been doing pretty well in that field. You know? I'm glad to know that we're doing actually very well in that field. But uh, talking about medical tourism, <laughs> let's talk about treatment. Mm -hmm. What kind of treatment uh, that attracts uh, our friends from abroad to come over here to Malaysia to get sorted up? Uh, we, we've been seeing people with a uh, cardiac problem. Okay, right. Listen, If they, they need a bypass, if they need uh, angioplasties, they do come in here. And those with cancer, with orthopedic issues. But of late, there has been a large number of patients who actually come in for cosmetic and aesthetic Cosmetics, yes. Okay. You know, so they, they they come and see the plastic surgeons, who are also known as cosmetic surgeons, and they want to get uh, certain parts of their body or the face uh, looking much more beautiful. Right. And that has been a big thing. And lately, I think the push has also been towards uh, what is non-traditionally the, the the plastic surgeons' forte, mm -hmm. which was uh, which is actually aesthetic gynecology. That's also a big demand in the region. Okay. And uh, people have been going a lot to the Middle East for these treatments, but now they are actually looking at this part of the world mm -hmm. and more so to Malaysia. Right. Yeah. With that being said, right, there is a particular drive that they come here to the country of Malaysia to get sorted out and to get treatment. Now, uh, what is the reason that they choose Malaysia, our precious country, for treatments? I think, well, sad to say, our ringgit is not doing too well. Okay. But because of that, health care, if you come into this country, even for a holiday, mm -hmm. people find it so much cheaper. Now, when it comes to health care, what we can offer a particular surgery, for example, can be done at a fraction of the cost mm -hmm. if you were to compare it to most countries. Mm -hmm. So people like coming in here because of the cost. But besides just the fact that it's cheaper, they do know that we have some touch not doctors and surgeons our nurses are actually in demand all over the world. Right. You know, so they've been plucked out of these countries to, to go to the Middle East because they know they're well qualified, well trained, mm -hmm. and so are our doctors. And a second part that uh, brings in these stories mm -hmm. is because all of us, nearly all of us can speak English very well. Ah, that's one. And that's a big attraction because if you were to go into some of our neighboring countries and they speak in their local language and they're not proficient in English mm -hmm. and when they can't speak English too well, I mean, me even as, uh, as a doctor going to some countries and trying to attend their conferences, they actually struggle in English and you don't really know what they're trying to say. Right. But that doesn't happen in this country. Right. Our nurses speak English very well and we've done very, very, We've done. We've gone far ahead of some of the neighbouring countries mm -hmm. in that respect. So, with that being said, right, doctor, uh, communication is key. Is actually vital. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when you mention that, of course, in the country of Malaysia, everybody speaks English well. So, which means to say that they communicate well between the doctors and the patients. Exactly. So, in terms of communicating and communication as a whole, the centre of attention right here. What is communication? Is it like to patients to doctors or doctors to nurses? 
You know, if you're, if you're a patient and you have a certain particular pain... You, you know, want some, your doctor to understand. You, sometimes you even want the nurse to understand, to convey this message to the doctor. And right. if that's not being said properly, then, you know, the doctor doesn't know and if, if they don't turn up to see you, and even if the doctor doesn't understand you, you know, we, we, you know, certain certain people from certain countries, their dialect is slightly different. Correct. But if you can speak English well, you will be able to pick up. Fantastic. But if you don't speak English well, you don't know what they're trying to say. Yeah. You know, even the word pain can be said in multiple ways in different countries. Yeah. But I think as doctors, you will be able to get across if you can understand English. Right. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, doctor. And of course, um, knowing that they come here to Malaysia, where do they actually come from? Which region? Well, uh, we do see a lot of tourists, you know, and I think uh, Australia was uh, one of the countries that people used to come here. <laughs> Indonesia, a large number of Indonesians, a large number of Chinese. They come for different, you know, the Chinese come here mostly for infertility treatment. Infertility the Australian, treatment. yeah, they'll be surprising because, you know, maybe, uh, I think they are on par with us, but maybe there are certain reasons why they like to come here. And surprisingly, when you say I'm coming in for an infertility treatment, <laughs> it's not as if you've undergone some form of surgery. Mm -hmm. So while waiting for the treatment to start or in between the treatment, mm -hmm. you can actually have a mini holiday. So they like that, you know, and we're also seeing uh, big numbers coming from the Middle East, from the Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. And that also is because we being a Muslim country, our food is so easy for them. You know, they don't have to actually look out and see whether it's halal. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you were to go to some of our neighboring countries, you know, you don't even know what you're going to end up eating. And if you if you can't communicate to find out whether there's pork in this, this mm -hmm. food, you might end up accidentally eating pork. That most of the time does not happen in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find pork, you know. Yeah. In most places, you won't find it, actually. Right. Something as easy as that that brings about uh, tourists in a country to seek a medical tourism. Now, um, talking about medical tourism, when we talk about our guests, our friends coming mm -hmm. from abroad, mm -hmm. who are they actually? Are they professional people or someone in the corporate world, someone who can afford? Who are they actually? I mean, if they can actually afford, if you're a multimillionaire, you don't need to leave your country, right? Yes. It's those who are probably in the, what we call the M40, mm -hmm. that who can actually afford a trip abroad, they are the ones who are turning up. But you'll be surprised because, you know, some of these people are actually uh, celebrities. They come here knowing that our healthcare is on par or even equivalent uh, or even superior to some of the places where they come from. Mm -hmm. You know, our doctors have done very well. Mm -hmm. IGN has done very well. A lot of these centers have actually given themselves such a good name mm -hmm. that people do not hesitate entering into Malaysia for treatment. Mm -hmm. So that's one of it. And when you say, are they, are they professionals? Not necessarily so. Mm -hmm. We are seeing actually uh, push towards, um, uh, you know, I, I have a, a lot of patients who are actually uh, working as Bangladeshis or even Indonesians. And when their relatives get unwell in their home country, and they come here, they bring them over here right. and say seek treatment in this country because some of them seem to have very high confidence in our treatment, you know. And and I think that's where we we have not really capitalized on this. Mm -hmm. We should be actually trying to attract people from these nations who are actually willing to travel all the way here mm -hmm. for treatment. And some of us we actually don't know that we can actually get sorted out via medical tourism exactly. under this whole context altogether. So it's very important important that we uh, let our friends and relatives from abroad know that you can come here to Malaysia and to get sorted out, right? Okay, let's talk about uh, insurance, you know, stuff uh, that would be hindrance or problem for healthcare travellers. Uh, COVID-19, of course, the pandemic and certain health insurance is definitely required. So is this going to be a major problem here with medical tourism? To be very honest, if you come towards uh, treatment like infertility or even treatment like uh, aesthetic work, okay. cosmetic work, insurance doesn't cover. Yeah. Right? But uh, even if they do, I mean, for certain treatments, you know, assuming somebody has got a fibroid, I've had uh, quite a few patients who've had ovarian cysts and fibroids from Indonesia, mm -hmm. from, from around this region, who've actually come from their country here seeking treatment. They do have insurance, right. but sometimes the insurance coverage may not be sufficient. Mm -hmm. So when they, 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 they look for cheap alternatives, you know, for example, there are some people in Malaysia who say their coverage is only 10,000. Mm -hmm. Your surgery may cost 15. So the same thing happens in their countries. So they come here and the insurance can be used most of the time unless there are specific clauses. Right. You know, and I think uh, with regards to COVID, COVID, COVID actually 
messed up with a lot of lives. In yes, a sense, did. you know, it, we it, not it. only lost lives, but we also lost income. A lot of people uh, they, they jo lost their livelihood. And so some of them who are actually doing extremely well, because COVID put a pause, mm -hmm. they lost a bulk of the income. Right. Now, it's the tourism, everything has taken off. Resume, with, yes. It's probably even doubling up. You know, flights are full, hotels are full, and people are starting to make money all over again. Mm -hmm. And I foresee things actually becoming very, very busy in the near future as far as health tourism is concerned. Mm. Okay, Doctor, now your thoughts on the future of medical and health tourism here in the country? Mm -hmm. We have only tapped the tip of the tip of the iceberg. We have a lot more to go. Mm -hmm. We have a lot more countries to explore. Mm -hmm. Many people do like coming into the Malaysia. Our weather is nice. It's lovely. Yeah. It's not like certain countries where it's raining all year round. Yes. You know, correct. ours. We do have our rain. It lasts for 30 minutes, and we are back to good hot weather. People love this, and we we need to look at a bigger, bigger clientele. You'll be surprised. There are. Africans coming here for treatment and they're far, far away. Mm -hmm. You know, for them to actually land up here is three flights. Yeah. And But even they are starting to turn up and they are bringing the relatives here for treatment and we should actually explore at uh, different countries and right. different... One of the hindrances probably would be language. Language, yes, you know, correct. And language, but even then, if you did focus, for example, if you wanted to focus on the Bangladeshi market, maybe you should, you should, you should have Bangladeshi translators mm -hmm. who could actually assist because very often, when my Bangladeshi patients who actually lived in Malaysia, they can speak beautiful Malay, mm -hmm. right? But when it comes to their spouses, they can't speak. Mm -hmm. But if you had somebody who could speak in their language, they would love it. Yeah. You know, and I think that is something that we need to focus on in the future. I mean, with technology these days, you can definitely translate all forms of communication via your cell phone. Now, uh, Doctor, unfortunately, we don't have much time. Just a very brief um, answer and uh, explanation. Mm -hmm. We, on why Malaysians need to know about medical tourism and how important it is for us to know about medical tourism. You know, people, people, we, we, we meet foreigners. We meet foreigners all the time. And actually, if medical tourism was to take off on a big scale, you will increase our revenue to the country. Right. You know, so every human being in Malaysia should know that, you know, we are actually thriving very well mm -hmm. and trying to explore of bringing people into the country right. to come and seek treatment. We, we don't do this because we think, how does that benefit me? Yeah. But if it benefits the country, our ringgit goes up higher. It will benefit you. It will benefit us, exactly. Yeah. You know, so we should look into this. Everybody should understand. And the the final take-home message I would be that our healthcare is far better than I've worked abroad. I've worked in many countries in the past. And I come back to Malaysia and I say our healthcare is far superior. Whether you go to a general hospital, you've waited three hours in the emergency and you feel that they're not giving you good care. But believe me, when there's problems, they will look after you far better than most countries. Fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Doctor, once again for joining us right here on the table. Very special edition right here. And of course, if you want to have a look at the repeated um, segment right here or episode, you're more than welcome to uh, stream at RTM Click. Anyways, that's it from us this evening with Sahih Samsudin. I'm Brendan Paul from the River to the Sea, Palestine will be free. Thanks for watching.